Am I a soldier of the cross, a follower of the Lamb? And shall I fear to own his cause, or blush to speak his name? Shall I be carried to the skies on flowery beds of ease? Whilst others fought to win the prize And sailed on bloody seas I present a lot of immigrants um, in the state and in this country. I have cases everywhere in the United States, uh, including uh, Iowa, Kansas, Nebraska, Minnesota, Texas, Florida, and so on. Muy buenas noches. Yo soy el abogado Marco Sayed. Ya tengo desde 1990 que estoy practicando en la ley de la inmigración. Yo he trabajado en varios estados, hablando de los nombres de Iowa, Nebraska, Nebraska Florida, Florida, New York. En todos esos estados he trabajado. No lo más en inmigración, pero en otros casos. Pero él comenzó en 1990. Mi mi madre es de Alemania, mi padre es de Algeria, Norte África. Es de Norte África y Alemania. Él sabe lo que es la vida de un inmigrante. Correcto. I was asked where my mother, where where am I from originally? My mother is German and my father is from North Africa, from Algeria. Uh, I will I will allow Mr. Conway, who's sitting right next to me, to introduce himself. Um, okay, I'm uh, Simon Conway. Senor Simon Conway. The afternoon drive host on uh, News Radio 1040 WHO here in uh, Des Moines, Iowa. Es el señor que tiene el programa en el 1040 WHO aquí en la ciudad de Des Moines, Iowa. And um, I'm a, been a talk radio host uh, all over the country, and I too am an immigrant and a citizen, originally from London, England. Él también es un inmigrante, viene de Inglaterra y tiene diferentes programas en la cual que tiene el programa en el radio. You're on the radio. Yes. En el radio. And what else? What else do you need to know? <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll start, I'll throw the oil on the fire. Um, uh, yeah. the, I think the reason we're sitting here is that uh, Mr. Conway and I have a different view of immigration, of immigration law, and um, so each of us is going to basically defend his position this is not an issue of whether I'm right or he's wrong or I'm wrong and he's right. It is more of an issue of presenting our point of views, uh, exchange of ideas. I am not going to convince him and he's not going to convince me. So that's... Ahora este tiempo, los dos señores están presentes porque los dos tienen el interés en la inmigración, pero tienen dos puntos de vista en que ellos van a poner sus opiniones no quiere decir que van a estar de acuerdo o que van a salir en algún argumento o descuento de algo, pero ellos quieren presentar sus ideas y los modos en que ellos pueden ver una, un cambio en la inmigración. Mr. Conway, would you like to present your point of view and then I'll answer or I'll uh, counter? Typical lawyer. <laughs> pero dice el señor abogado que vaya a presentar sus, sus, sus puntos y él dice que es típico de un abogado. I'm a defense attorney, I always go second. <laughs> I, I love lawyers, but I couldn't eat a whole one. <laughs> uh, and all joking aside, I mean, I had a great immigration lawyer, so uh, I genuinely got a lot of respect for uh, this man on my left. I think he does a very valuable job because uh, our immigration is appalling. Uh, the way you come into this country legally is appalling and has to be changed. Um, I say this on the radio all the time. Dice que tiene este punto, que para entrar a este país es muy difícil, 
que, y el modo que se tiene que entrar legalmente es bastante difícil. So, él tiene mucha conciencia en lo que sufre uno cuando viene como inmigrante para entrar a este país o cualquier país, si no son de, de ese país. But you see, it's difficult in the wrong places and it's easy in the wrong places. It's uh, difficult from a bureauc bureaucracy point of view and you absolutely need a lawyer to navigate through the minefield because if you don't have one, you're going to fall foul and you're probably going to have to start again. Y la cosa más importante es cuando uno trata de entrar, necesita la información y la ayuda, poder de un buen abogado de la inmigración para que ellos saben el camino, las cosas que necesitan que hacer y si uno no puede hacer eso, entonces pueden entrar, pero a lo mejor les va a caer muy mal. So, necesitan que hacer las cosas bien en la mano de un abogado bueno. So, when I say it's difficult in the wrong places, uh, the bureaucracy is a complete and utter nightmare. Um, for example, while you're going through immigration, uh, if you want to leave the country to go and uh, visit a sick or dying relative, you have to get a lovely document uh, every single year for you and all your family uh, called Advanced Parole. That's the name of the document. Dice que es muy difícil porque cuando tenemos a alguien que está enfermo en nuestro país o sea, están para morir o algo, necesitan que pedir un papel y ese papel se llama, what did you name that form? Is the parole. Advanced parole. Uh, es uh, avanzado, el parole, para dándoles permiso para salir del país y cada año, entonces necesitan que pedir ese papel especialmente. Actually, no es stopping you leaving, you need that document in order to get back in. And um, uh, so no one will ever stop you leaving, but you have to have that document with you in order to get back into the United States. Uh, you have to pay for that document. You have to have fingerprints taken for that document. I think I gave my fingerprints up 17 times in uh, seven and a half years on my journey. Dice que en siete años y medio le tomaron sus huellas 17 veces. Y ese papel, yo lo sé por, Michael, I can speak to this person, porque yo tuve una familia en la cual que les ayudé. Y entonces... Pueden salir, pero necesitan ese documento, otro documento, para poder entrar con el permiso del país. Si no, no pueden entrar. Pueden salir, pero no pueden entrar. Um, and so you've got to do that. Another thing you've got to do is you've got to have a medical, because they want to make sure you don't have any communicable diseases, which I approve of. Uh, it's a throwback to Ellis Island, but I approve of it. Big problem. It's got nothing to do with that and everything to do with money. Uh, I paid 450 bucks to a doctor, who I never saw, by the way. I only saw his nurse. She took some blood. And uh, there, the, the major problem with that fact is it was three and a half years after I'd been here that I had a medical. If I was going to communicate a disease, I could have infected quite a large portion of the population by then. Dice que la cosa mal con eso también es que para entrar otra vez te van a dar un physical físicamente para poder decir que está sano y puedes entrar que el mismo al entrar esas veces por eso lo trae ahí en inglés que tuvo que pagar 450 dólares con un doctor que él ni conoció y que le sacó sano and this is because government is in charge government as I say regularly on the radio could not organize a party in a brewery <laughs> <laughs> él dice que todo esto es por parte del gobierno, que el gobierno no pudiera hacer una fiesta en una... ¿Qué es Brewery Cantina? Cerveza, se toma cerveza, cerveza, bar, no un lounge, pero que el gobierno no es capaz de poder hacer alguna cosa tan simple. Uh, it's sad but true. So from that point of view, from a bureaucracy point of view, and I really have only barely scratched the, uh, the surface of everything you have to do, from that perspective, it is an absolute nightmare, and it needs to be changed. It needs to be much easier to come into the United States legally. So let's, let's deal with that. Dice que de su punto, entonces él dice que el gobierno es una pesadilla para poder trabajar con ellos, para poder entrar, y eso no está bien. No es justo. Yo tengo ese mismo sentimiento. No es justo. I think Michael must be very upset. He keeps nodding in agreement. I'm not sure he's expecting that. So <laughs> Um, and then, at the end of it all, once you come to near the end of your journey, then it is way, way, way too easy. Ya cuando uno llega al fin de su viaje, dice que entonces es muy, muy fácil. 
You have to take a fifth grade level test. Tienen que tomar un examen de cuarto cinco. And on that fifth grade level test, you have to make a D to become a citizen of the greatest nation on God's green earth. Y dice que en ese examen tienes que tomar un D para entrar a este país, el país más grande de todo el mundo. You need not know anything about where this nation came from. No necesitas que saber de dónde vino esta nación. Anything about our founders, Nada apart de, from a name or two. <laughs> Nada de, de los que pusieron este país en su, en su nacer. Anything at all about our founders' intentions. Nada de, de lo que pensaban los hombres que pusieron en fundación del gobierno. The Federalist Papers should be required reading. What? The Federalist Papers. Dice que es un requisito el papel de los federalistas. And so you take this fifth grade level test verbally in front of an immigration officer where when I took it, one of the questions was how many stars are there, are there on the flag? And the flag is right in front of me on this guy's desk. And another question was, what is the purpose of the United Nations? <laughs> the answer to that question is to suck the taxpayers' blood from the United States of America. <laughs> If you say that, however, you won't get in. <laughs> so, at the end of all that, once you make your D, and uh, you don't have to make more than a D, I only made a D because uh, you get asked ten questions, you have to get seven right. I got the first seven right. I was a citizen. So, you don't get asked ten questions. And then it, go, it gets even worse because, uh, you know, that's citizenship. But prior to citizenship, you get a green card. And you can get a green card again and again and again and again. You need never become a citizen of the United States. So, way too easy at the end, way too difficult from a bureaucracy point of view. But I'm a solutions kind of guy. <laughs> this is what you have to do to change it. Job one. Primero. Secure the border. That doesn't just mean the southern border, it means the northern border, it means the airports and the ports secure our borders. It is actually the primary responsibility of the federal government. Dice que el primer trabajo del gobierno es que esté asegurado todas las fronteras y los aviones. Because any other change that you make is in complete irrelevance if you do not secure the border. Job number two, you have to simplify legal entry into the United States. The bureaucracy has grown up over years and it needs to be trimmed down which will probably put Michael out of work, but that's okay. It needs to be trimmed down dramatically. One green card only ever. If you can't decide to be a citizen of the United States after 10 years, then go home. Que si no pueden decidirse a ser ciudadanos después de 10 años, entonces necesitan que regresar a sus países. The test has to mean something. Being a citizen has to mean something. 
el examen y el, y el pensamiento que van a ser ciudadanos tiene que tener valor tiene que tener valor porque ya tiene tiempo de estar aquí I'm not even bothered about a test to be perfectly honest I would much rather see the uh, uh, a mandatory 20 hours of American history classes that you have to attend a mí se me hace que no es tan importante el examen yo mejor pensar a ver un clase de 20 horas en la cual estudia la historia de los Estados Unidos then you have to look at the employers entonces tenemos que revisar los que nos dan trabajo los employers employers employing illegal immigrants need to be punished las gentes que tienen negocios y usan gentes que no están aquí legalmente necesitan que darles una multa, necesitan que castigarlos. I would make it a $50,000 fine per immigrant, illegal immigrant. Yo les cobraría 50 mil dólares por cada persona que está trabajando en su negocio sin permiso. If you take away the jobs, you're going to take away a big part of the illegal immigration problem. Si quitan esos trabajos, entonces vamos a quitar una problema grande de la inmigración. So that's uh, illegal immigration. We've dealt with the border. We've dealt with employers. We now have to deal with penalties for people who break our laws by coming into our country illegally. Hemos hablado sobre el trabajador, los, el gobierno, lo que necesitamos que hacer ahora vamos a hablar sobre la gente que entra sin permiso. Because right now, pretty much all we do is we round people up and throw them back over the border. Porque ahorita lo que hacen es juntan, tienen los verdes. Sometimes within an hour, they have re-entered the United States. So, if we catch illegal immigrants, we don't throw them back over the border. We lock them up for 12 months. No nos mandamos para atrás. Lo que vamos a hacer es ponerlos por 12 meses. En una if you go down that road, I believe you will completely cure our illegal immigration problem, and I haven't dealt with the illegal immigrants that are already here. Si nosotros seguimos ese camino, a mí se me hace que entonces el problema de emigrar, inmigración, se puede resolver, y yo no he batallado con esta gente este año. Those illegal immigrants who are here have broken the laws of the United States. La gente que está ilegalmente aquí. I don't want to hear that it's impossible to send people home. That is exactly what we should do. But that's a complete package. See, I don't just want to send illegal immigrants home. I want to send illegal immigrants home at the same time that we make it easier to come into the country legally, at the same time that we secure our borders. And finally, I want to get rid of the hyphen. The hyphen. Hyphen. <laughs> I'm serious, I do. I, I, I am not British American. I'm American. I don't want to hear about Canadian Americans. I don't want to hear about German Americans. I don't want to hear about African Americans. I don't want to hear about Hispanic Americans. We are Americans. Él quiere hacer americano y no, y no pusemos nuestros nuestros países. Those things are very important. You know, I gave a, a speech at a swearing-in ceremony of new citizens of the United States. I was invited by the uh, Department of Homeland Security to do that. Yo di un discurso en el programa cuando se hicieron ciudadanos varias gentes. La agencia de Homeland Security lo invitó que diera un discurso. And there is a tradition at these swearing-in ceremonies where they have a reading of the nations, which is the nations where people had come from represented in that hall for the swearing-in ceremony. Yeah. 
I can tell you that huge cheers go up for some countries, and very little for others, but huge cheers go up for some countries, and I just don't understand that. Dice que se ve que cuando dan el nombre de un país, hay varias gentes y dan mucho gusto y gritan y todo eso. Hay unos cuando anuncian el país, hay pocos y no hay nada casi de ruido para ellos. Because if people love those countries so much, what are they doing here? Si esa gente tiene tanto amor por su país, entonces ¿por qué se encuentran aquí? And then once you're here, you've got to get out of your communities. It's really about the hyphen. We don't just have to do away with the hyphen. We have to do away with the self-ghettoizing of these communities. Y entonces la cosa que necesita que pasar es que no necesitamos estar, voy a usar la palabra varios, podemos hacer gente de comunidad, envueltos en la comunidad. You see, it's easy. It's easy for me to hang out with people that were born in England. Es fácil para que yo me encuentre con gente de Inglaterra. And easy for other people to hang out with people that were born in Paraguay. Y es fácil para la gente que nació en Paraguay que se junten y tengan su grupo. But America isn't supposed to be easy. Pero el país de América no es fácil. Ask the pilgrims. Pardon me? Yeah. Ask the pilgrims. O oh, como los primeros gentes que se llaman pilgrims, los que vinieron a, la, a los Estados Unidos, ¿ok? America is supposed to be difficult because we have what I like to call advanced citizenship. It is citizenship that is different from other places. It is citizenship that enables Michael and I to sit side by side here completely disagreeing with each other and yet defending with our very lives each other's right to say those words. And we're losing that. And the reason we're losing that is because new immigrants, legal or otherwise, are not becoming American. They're Mexican American. They're Australian American. They cheer for their soccer team from the country of their origins. I've got to tell you, in the last World Cup, when England played USA, I proudly wore my USA shirt, went to the pub, and cheered them on. <laughs> and I can also tell you that neither in Orlando, where I spent the last 10 years, or here in Des Moines, did I ever hang out with any English community. If we forget the fact that we're supposed to be Americans, then the country is lost. Thank you very much. I put this microphone here so if, if anybody wants to interrupt with a point or a comment or a question. Is it guys that la máquina de hablar de micrófono si tienen un punto que quieren dar Yes, the beauty of America is that we can sit next to each other and not kill each other yet disagree totally. La belleza del país de América es que podemos sentarnos aquí juntos y dar nuestras opiniones y matarnos uno con otro con las palabras. I respect the position of Mr. Conway. He's right. I will defend this right with my life. Because the Constitution of the United States says that we have freedom of speech. When I became a citizen, I raised my hand and I swore 
to defend the Constitution. Cuando yo me hice ciudadano, yo levanté mi mano para ser mi ciudadano y di palabras que yo iba a defender la Constitución. I didn't swear to defend the flag. Yo no dije que iba a defender la bandera. The president. El presidente. A political party. Los partidos políticos. I swear to defend the Constitution. Yo dije que iba, yo juré que iba a defender la Constitución. And what it stands for. Y por qué tenemos esa Constitución. And part of that is freedom of speech. Which means we can say what we believe. And we have the right to do so without being threatened. Intimidated. Or made fun of. Now, I would like to address a couple of things. Yo quiero dar unos puntos aquí. I work every day with what is now known as the USCIS. Yo trabajo todos los días con, USCIS. USCIS. That's the old, that's the new immigration, that's the new INS. Es el nombre nuevo de la inmigración. Guess what? We heard that the problem with immigration is the government. It's not the government that's the problem. It's who is running the government. Under the Bush administration, and the Republican Congress, the USCIS, USCIS call, it, call it La Migra, La Migra. <laughs> became a for profit organization. Sí, so una organización que es por hacer dinero. Profito. Profito. Dinero. dinero. That is what the U.S. Immigration Service is. It's a for profit organization. Es lo que es esa organización. Una organización que va a hacer dinero para profeto. This is why. Por eso. The government or the immigration is asking. El gobierno y la inmigración está pidiendo. One thousand four hundred and ninety dollars. Mil. Cuatrocientos noventa. Per person. Por persona. To get a green card. Para que les den la tarjeta. Now, remember. That is asked from people who are not supposed to be working here. And maybe they're working in Mexico. Or in Africa. Or in Africa. For two dollars a day. For those dollars per day. Five dollars a day. Cinco dollars per day. And these people are supposed to pay one thousand four hundred and ninety dollars. As I like to say to the Congress, Como me gusta al Congreso, quoting a journalist, y voy a dar palabras de un escritor, what were you smoking? ¿Qué estaban fumando? And how much did you inhale? ¿Y cuánto? <laughs> when you wrote the stupid law. <laughs> Because that's the only way somebody could have written something as stupid as our immigration laws. Mr. Conway referred to the fifth grade level test. It is true. It's a very simple test. I wouldn't even put it at the fifth level. Ni lo en el quinto grado. I would put it at the second grade level. Lo en el grado segundo. But here's the problem. Pero aquí está el problem. Mr. Saeed, before you go on, I have a point to make. This may be the fifth grade level for Americans to take, but for Mexicans and other people, this is not as easy because they have no background here. They do not. They probably don't even speak. 
They probably don't even speak our language. How are they going to read, nonetheless, decide whether the answers are? Dice el niño que para él es una pregunta que no es tan simple porque tenemos gente y yo, yo como tengo un programa en la cual te ayudo varias gente, es cierto porque muchísimos de ellos nunca no fueron a la escuela y ni pueden leer ni escribir su propio idioma. That's true. That is a big problem. Es un problema muy grande. Especially for the citizenship test. Especialmente para el examen de la ciudad. Because a lot of people don't know how to read and write. Porque mucha gente no sabe cómo leer ni escribir. Not everybody was as lucky as I am. No todos tuvieron la suerte que tuve. As Mr. Conway was. Como el señor Conway. As my son is. Como mi hijo. We have an education, but a lot of people don't have that had that privilege. Que hay muchas personas que no tuvieron ese privilegio. So it is true that it's very difficult. It's a second grade level test now. So es muy cierto. What is very interesting is lo que es muy interesante. But once you pass that test, y una vez que ya pases ese examen, you more or you know more about American history and politics than most Americans. Lo que pasa en esos exámenes y también puedo dar perspectiva a eso, que cuando acaban con el curso y aprenden esto, nosotros conocemos más de la historia de los Estados Unidos que los nosotros mismos los ciudadanos de los Estados Unidos. This is not something I'm making up. Esto no es algo que yo no estoy diciendo. There recently was a Newsweek. En el magazine Newsweek. That exactly pointed that out. Hubo un artículo sobre ese tema. One of the question of the test is who did we fight in World War II? Una de las preguntas que está en ese examen, ¿a quién peleamos en la guerra número dos? 48% of Americans had no idea. 48% de Americanos no tenían contestación. That's bad. Eso es malo. Mr. Conway said we should ask about the Federalist Papers. El señor Conway dice que debemos preguntar de los exámenes que tenemos. I challenged Mr. Conway to find 90, to find 2%, 2 percent of Americans that know what that is. Yo le digo al señor Conway que busque dos personas que saben qué es la contestación. There's very few Americans who know what the federal, Federalist Papers are. Hay pocas gentes americanas que saben qué es los papeles de los federalistas. And the reason he knows it? Y la razón que él lo sabe? He went to school in Britain. Porque él fue a escuela en Inglaterra. I went to school in a French high school. Yo fui a la escuela en una escuela francesa. And to finish my high school, y para acabar mi, I had to take a test. Escuela, tuve que tomar un examen. Not the SAT. No, the SAT. Not the all of the above. Or todo lo demás. I had to write an essay. Tuve que escribir un papel. I had four hours to do it. Tenía cuatro horas para hacerlo. The question was the following. La pregunta era la siguiente. What was the impact of the automobile on the American Industrial Revolution. ¿Qué fue el impacto de la industrial de los el carro. El carro. I challenge anybody to answer this question. I challenge the adults in this country to answer this question. I challenge the students in this country to answer this question. Yo les doy esta pregunta a los estudiantes, a cualquier persona que contesta esta, pre esta pregunta. So before we start telling people, you are an immigrant, thou shall know more than, than the Americans, I think we Americans need to put, get together and say, you know what, let's put some money in our schools. Antes que nosotros podemos decir a ustedes que necesitan que saber todo esto, lo que necesitamos que hacer como un país es poner dinero para la educación de esta nación. I will throw this in. I keep hearing that some people are against raising taxes. Yo estoy oyendo que gentes no quieren que aumenten los taxes. On the one percent of the Americans, the top one percent. En el uno por ciento de los americanos. I am a member of those one percent. Yo soy un miembro de ese uno por ciento. Nobody asked me. Nadie me preguntó a mí. I say raise my taxes. Yo digo que alce mis taxes. Why are you speaking for me? ¿Por qué están hablando por mí? How dare you? ¿Cómo van a hacer eso? Anyway, so that's to get to the schools because I want my schools to have more money. Yo mis más It is true. 
as Mr. Conway said, that the process is absolutely ridiculous. You go for fingerprints after fingerprints. You go through, you jump through one hoop after the other. And all of that just to get the right to stay here. Now before I address the eight or nine points Mr. Conway um, proposed, I would like to go back and do some little history. Like history lessons. Until about 1986, there were very few undocumented people in this country. The reason was this. Most of the people who were in this country were Mexicans. What they did was, they would come over for 10 months, they would work, and then they would go back to Mexico for two months. Their family was in Mexico, their kids were in Mexico, so it was a come back and forth. Why do I know this? I talked to the agents who were at the border. They told me. We used to go, hey, Jose, see you in two months. <laughs> and Jose would say, you'll be in line, we'll see you in two months. <laughs> now, in 1996, geniuses in our beloved Congress were looking for a political thing to deal with. And now they decided we need to block our borders. And what happened was this. It's a very normal. The people could suddenly no go, they couldn't go back and forth anymore. So what they did was, okay, I'm going to bring all my family here. So instead of only having Jose here for 10 months, now you have Jose, Maria, and the six kids. Maybe they brought grandpa and grandma also. And now we had suddenly, instead of one person, we had 10 people. And everybody was, what happened? Well, what happened is you guys stopped the normal flow of people. And then you complain. Yeah. Mr. Conway said we need to secure the border. I agree with him. I'm not for open border. I'm not for, hey, let's everybody in. That's, that, that would be a stupid argument. But now, how do we secure a 3,000 border at the south? Another 3,000 on the north? Hmm? Plus the border on the sea. Because I guarantee you, if you want to come into this country, I will come in. It doesn't matter what you do. All right, so we decided to spend a billion dollars for this modern fence. We spent a billion dollars for about, about 100 miles. Now you do the math. That's where our taxpayer money is going. Building fences, a billion dollars for each mile, for 100 miles. What? So that Jose doesn't come over the border. And pick our fruit. And, and cut our meat. Because the problem is this. Let's be honest. And this is what's missing in this debate, is honesty. A couple of years ago, the president of Mexico said, what is your problem? 
The Mexicans in America do the work nobody else wants to do. And there was an uproar. How dare you say that? Oh, God. <laughs> This is exactly the truth. They do the job nobody else wants to do. Sir, could you kind of lower your voice a little bit? It's becoming irritating. Is it? I've got two pages of stuff to talk about what you're saying. I'm trying to be respectful. Paul. Okay. I feel like you're yelling. Well, well, I'm sorry, ma'am, I have a loud no, I'll voice. I'll try not to yell when it's my turn. Okay, okay. you can, yeah, please. You want me to lower the microphone? Yeah, that'd be sweet. Okay. <laughs> and I'll be happy to listen to your question. And, and, I don't I, have questions. Yeah, I, I, have, I, I have Please don't answers. hesitate so to interrupt me. Could There's I start right now? Right there, there you go. Okay. Well, my name is Peggy Schultz. Well, um, nice meeting you, Peggy. I'm from Iowa. My, microphone. Uh, I'm from Des Moines. I'm from Iowa. I'm in fact Catholic. Um, I'm part of Holy Family School. I understand how there's uh, people from both sides that come at this. I do not believe, and I'll start real quick on that. Jesus didn't say disobey the rules. He did not say that. So okay, so now I'm going to get started on comment on some stuff you did. You say that you know these fences cost so much. Every other country has laws, even your country, or wherever the hell, Mexico, excuse my French, in Mexico, nobody else would tolerate what we're having done. Now, I would be on your side, by the way. Yeah, I'm lucky yeah. enough to have a Mexican about ready to marry my daughter. So I understand what you're going through. But what I don't understand is how people think they're above the law. I have taxes taken out all the time, which, you know, just for starters, when you say, well, nobody else will do that work, how come they're not willing to pay taxes on that? That's how our country's ran. Then you say, no, wait a minute, let me just start. I probably don't even need these things. You say that you'd be willing to pay more. Well, you know what? Every other nationality that I know about helps each other, especially from the Mexicans. Germans did, a lot of people do. You could do this the right way. I think it is bizarre how all this goes down. I would be on your side, but I'm watching our country implode because people just think they're above the law. And, and I just honestly, I struggled my whole life with my kids. My kids are raised. Now I pay for every single. Can it be legal to ration fundamental rights like liberty? Ration mm -hmm. fundamental rights. Yeah, so that maybe only the first percent have liberty of, or freedom of speech or the right to life? No, I don't think that's the definition of liberty. I don't think you determine who has it and who doesn't have it, no. You can't ration it, no. Okay. 
Never heard of such a thing. What you have just heard is profound. Let me explain why. Liberty is the second most fundamental right, second only to life itself according to their order in the Declaration of Independence. Liberty is one of very few rights specified in the original Constitution, which begins, We the people of the United States, in order to secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do establish this Constitution. According to the Supreme Court, these two clauses of the 14th Amendment guarantee the fundamental rights of everyone living in the United States, even unauthorized aliens. Nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. The court quoted Senator Howard, the floor manager of the 14th Amendment of Congress. The Supreme Court agreed with Senator Howard when he said, The last two clauses of the first section of the amendment disable a state from depriving not merely a citizen of the United States, but any person, whoever he may be, of life, liberty, or property without due process of law or from denying to him the equal protection of the laws of the state. This abolishes all class legislation in the states and does away with the injustice of subjecting one caste of persons to a code not applicable to another. And yet numerical limitations ration liberty to one percent of the Mexicans trying to come legally. 100,000 out of 10 million are rationed liberty. Many have hired lawyers to submit their applications only to wait decades for their applications to be processed. It's not just Mexican. There are nearly 20 Sudanese in Des Moines who came legally but are now undocumented because they didn't know how to renew their temporary visas before the deadline or they lost their papers, or they were arrested because they did not know our laws, and once arrested and before their probation is ended, they are ineligible to renew. And you have <coughs> just heard Judge Roy Moore laugh at the idea of rationing liberty <coughs> and calling it constitutional. Our immigration laws are founded on the rationing of liberty. Judge Roy Morris is the most popular judge among conservative Republicans. He was the chief justice of the Alabama Supreme Court when uh, a federal judge thought he should remove his Ten Commandments display from the courtroom. And they ended up removing <coughs> Judge Roy Moore along with his display uh, amongst uh, legal arguments that were as dubious as, uh, as uh, the legal arguments that justify abortion. He's very popular among Republicans. In other words, he's the very hero of the very people at the heart of the anti-immigrant movement. His expertise in the law is honored by the heart of anti-immigration his legal credentials exceed those of any presidential candidate. Let's listen to him again. Okay. Can it be legal to ration fundamental rights like liberty? Ration fundamental rights. Yeah, so that maybe only the first percent have liberty or freedom of speech or the right to life? No, I don't think that's the definition of liberty. I don't think you determine who has it and who doesn't have it, no. You can't ration it, no. It, Never heard of such a thing. So how can numerical limitations be constitutional? They can't. There's no way. No court has been asked to rule on the constitutionality of numerical limitations. I believe if courts were asked, they would agree with Judge Roy Moore and I that you can't ration liberty to people living on U.S. soil. 
But wait, if numerical limitations are ruled unconstitutional, the whole world will come here. Uh, actually, at some point along the immigration of the whole world into the United States, the United States will annex the whole world. But, but frankly, there are a lot of violent, lawless people in the world who prefer living where they can resolve disputes with bullets rather than ideas, where they can own slaves, and where they can get a job as a government torturer. We attract quality immigrants who want to acquire wealth by honest hard work that benefits others rather than by oppressing others. So I asked Judge Moore if numerical limitations can be justified to control population. The courts say that fundamental rights can be restricted if the restriction survives strict scrutiny and if it serves a compelling government interest. Strict scrutiny means it has to be a restriction that is the least restrictive way to achieve a purpose which is a compelling government purpose. Fundamental liberty rights can be uh, restricted if the restriction survives strict scrutiny and serves a compelling government interest. Can reducing population density be a compelling government interest for rationing liberty? If I understand the proper, if I understand your question, I would answer no. It's questionable whether I understand it, but I, I don't think you can have a compelling interest to reduce the number of people in an area. No. I don't think there's any doubt Judge Moore understood the question, but I was not allowed enough time with him to explain how I intended to place these questions in the context of immigration. I tried later to write and explain to him, but have been unable to find an address for him that he will respond from. Judge Roy Moore laughs at the idea of calling it constitutional to ration liberty. He utterly rejects the excuse for rationing liberty that we need to reduce our population. And yet, American immigration policy is founded on the rationing of liberty to supposedly help control U.S. population growth. How can our immigration laws be constitutional? They are not. But courts can't rule on issues not brought before them, and no court has been asked to rule on the constitutionality of numerical limitations. It is time we asked them. Well, so, uh, so I tried to assemble all these ideas into a, a legal brief, and I'm just waiting for the day someone can use this. This is a web. This is the, for the brief. You can you can find it. Uh, it's in English. This is designed so that if you are facing a deportation hearing, or you are charged with helping undocumented immigrants. You can use these legal arguments to challenge the constitutionality of numerical limitations and not only set yourself free, but millions others. Are these legal arguments sound? Well, that has not been tested by mainstream lawyers or courts. So you're going to have to determine the answer the way Protestants say you're supposed to interpret the Bible. You're going to have to read them for yourself and think for yourself about their validity. I've tested these arguments by every means available to me, shown them to several lawyers, and on the basis of those tests, they appear to be irrefutable. But I understand that having irrefutable legal arguments in court does not guarantee victory. Another benefit of studying these arguments, if you are an undocumented immigrant, is that you will find it very encouraging to learn that you are not the lawbreaker. It is those who support unconstitutional numerical limitations who are violating the U.S. Constitution and undermining America's rule of law. Nothing can make prosecution pleasant, 
but it is a lot easier to bear when you know you are innocent. I have in mind how many more immigrants I would like to see welcomed into the United States. And I've embedded that number in a question which I've been able to ask three presidential candidates. Um, if you're curious, if I can get your email address, I'll email you the report so that you can learn what their answers are. And I might be able to get that translated. Um, and keep in mind as you listen to this question that I've asked these three candidates that the heart of the anti-immigrant movement is conservative Republicans who are most concerned with about our national debt and about abortion. So here is the question. Our national debt is scary because Americans' young, healthy, tax-paying workforce has been too depleted by abortion to support Port entitlement sucking old sick seniors like me who allowed 50 million American innocents to cruelly die. Meanwhile, millions of strong young workers wait at our borders to replace those we have slain to take care of us and our debts. But our numerical limitations won't let them. If we are serious about saving America from financial collapse, isn't it time to revisit those numerical limitations, along with finally stopping the slaughter? Oh uh -huh.